there are no certifications for a UDR. Excuse it is me? not, it is not a certification. So it this doesn't, is, you don't get a tick that says a UDR compliant? No, no, no. And, 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 and you cannot give somebody a certification on UDR. Uh, this is, this is a due diligence process. It's a, it's a directive and, and it is just like when you are reporting as an exporter on your financial statements. Mm -hmm. It's a due diligence you have to do, but nobody's certifying you that you can report your financial statement. Nobody can certify you in that. Um, you, you look for third parties to help you and on the reports, but, but there is no certification on this. This is a due diligence process that every operator has to perform in order to make available coffee in Europe. Mapa Forward Business Mastermind Groups are back for 2024. And if past mastermind groups are anything to go by, you absolutely want to be a part of this if you're a business owner ready for change. Spots are limited to 10 people per group and if you own a business in the coffee sector and are looking for support in a nurturing and focused group coaching environment, this could be the thing that helps you through these challenging times in coffee and jump starts your planning for 2025. There are three mastermind groups, each with a different business focus. I will be your coach and the first one will be focused on strategic business planning, the second one on business growth and the third on increasing your sales in coffee, both B2B and B2C. Groups start the week commencing October 7 and prices start at $189 per month for three months. You get a discount if you pay all three months in advance. Previous participants found these groups life-changing for their business and all groups come with a 100% money back guarantee. If you're interested in finding out more or registering, head to mapperforward.coffee forward slash group coaching or check the links in the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode two of a five-part series where we're talking about EUDR from the perspective of a coffee trader. And the specific coffee trading company that we're talking about is Caravella. And joining me in this series is Pedro Menga. And we are talking about in this episode, the mechanics of EUDR and the uncertainty underpinning the path forward. Now, a fun fact. Did you know that instant coffee is not included in this? Which breaks my know. brain. You know, they don't know. A lot of people don't know this. And shout out to Komal Sable, who uh, told me about this, because I think it's wild that instant coffee is not included. Do you know why it's not included? I'm not certain on the why. I'm not certain on the why it is not included. My guess, which is not probably not a very good one, is that you have to... You, you make instant coffee with roasted coffee, which was already a product. Um, so oh. it, it's, it's what I, what I would believe. So it, it already entered. Yeah. So it's just like, it, yeah. except most instant coffee is not made in Europe. Most instant coffee is made at origin. There you go. So I, I, that one, that one, I don't know. That, that one, I don't know why. I know it is not on the regulations, but I, I don't know the why. So that's a, that's a really great place for us to start this discussion. So the mechanics of EUDR, it includes green coffee and roasted coffee, right? Not, not instant coffee, but it does include both green and roasted, correct? Yes. Okay. And how is it going to work from, if we are talking about the, the mechanics of it, let's say Caravella wants to move some coffee from Colombia. What do you have to get it certified before it leaves? Do you get it certified? Uh, do you get it uh, like cleared in Europe? Do, have they made that very clear? So that, that's the first point. There, there are no certifications. For a UDR, Excuse it is me? not. It is not a certification. 
So it this doesn't. Is, you don't get a tick that says EUDR compliant. No, 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 no. And 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 you cannot give somebody a certification on EUDR. Uh, this is this is a due diligence process. It's a it's a directive, and and it is just like when you are reporting as an exporter on your financial statements. Mm -hmm. It's a due diligence you have to do, but nobody's certifying you that you can report your financial statements. Nobody can certify you in that. Um, you, you look for third parties to help you and on the reports, but, but there is no certification on this. This is a due diligence process that every operator has to perform in order to make available coffee in Europe. Am I wrong for being confused by this? It's, it's, it's caused by misinformation. Um, let's say that the due diligence process is responsibility and the accountable of it is the operator, which is defined as the enterprise making available coffee in Europe. So that entity has to do the due diligence. That entity has to provide the due diligence. And every entity that makes available coffee in Europe has to provide the same due diligence. And the due diligence does not state, or the regulation do not state at any point that you can present that your enterprise is certified as EUDR compliant. Therefore, your coffee, all your coffee is compliant. This is a due diligence done farm by farm. Uh, and, and producer by producer. Okay. If I understand it correctly, which I'm not sure that I do, uh, an importer in Europe, it is their responsibility to make sure that the coffee that they're bringing into Europe is deforestation free. There are companies yes. out there that have figured out ways to provide evidence to, let's say, Caravella, that the farms that they're working with are deforestation free, whether it's satellite photos. We've had David Browning from Inveritas on the podcast talking about this, that Inveritas was going around and could, and they were offering a service where they would provide the evidence to show you that you are deforestation free. So Caravella then goes, is it Caravella's responsibility or is it the producer's responsibility or it's not defined whose responsibility is to provide that documentation. It's responsibility of the whole supply chain. Caravella is accountable of it. Because Caravella chooses to be or because... No, because the regulations state that the one that makes available coffee in Europe is accountable for okay. the due diligence process. As Caravella is the importer, we are exporters, right. we're also importers, we are accountable of all the coffee that enter. If we sell that coffee to multiple partners in continent, uh, then they are not accountable of selling that coffee. We are accountable of them selling that coffee. Okay. Let's look at the scenario where Caravella, or a different, let's not use Caravella, a different company that was not an importer, they were just an exporter. And they're using, they're importing for a different, to a different, let's say direct to a ro coffee roaster. Who's, is it still everybody's responsibility? If I understand it correctly, it's the person at, in Europe, it's their responsibility to have verified and validated that this coffee is deforestation free and they have to be able to produce paperwork that demonstrates such. Is that correct? In this case, this exporter uh, gathers data that the importer needs. And the, this importer needs to align the strategy with all different exporters, that exporter partners, in order to align the data, this importer with different exporters has the responsibility of homogenizing that data and submitting the due diligence to Europe. Okay. And those different exporters might have 
different uh, business models, different, you know, resources on field, different uh, views, so different ways of gathering data, different producer baseline. So it, it all varies and it is responsibility of that importer to align all that data and risk assessment information in order to submit it to the EU. And have they made very clear what the, the data is that they require and the standards of what is acceptable? It is clear. Okay. I, I, it is clear on paper how to gather it. Is <laughs> okay, tough. that's where we want to get so, to. <laughs> so the mechanics of it are, are you know, are in 42 pages, which is not long, and, and you, you find them there. You have to be able to trace all the coffee you buy to a plot of coffee. Uh, you need to geolocate that plot of coffee. If it is a small plot, plot of coffee, that meaning less than four hectares, then you just need a latitude, longitude point. Mm -hmm. If it is bigger than that, then you need a polygon, which is six, at least six points mapping the circumference or the, or the perimeter of the farm. Mm -hmm. You need to assess the deforestation risk on that polygon. Have they given you a threshold for assessing that risk? There is not a threshold. Uh, <laughs> deforestation, deforestation is defined as the loss of, loss of forest, yet loss of forest in practice means a lot of things. It means selective logging, or it means uh, a partial burn, or it means agroforestry, or it means, you know, loss of forest can happen in different intensities, and it is not always uh, that you deforest the whole thing or the whole hectare and there is still deforestation. So it is not defined and that's the responsibility of the, of the due diligence. You need to define your own, what it is for you, deforestation, according to that set of rules, do you accept this and that, or for you as the risk manager is a present absence of deforestation. So you okay. can go as hard as you want or as flexible as you want, because at the end, there is this term in the, in the regulation that is called negligible risk. Mm -hmm. And it is not determining what negligible means. So that is determined by the operator. And it could be 10% of the farm or 0% of the farm. You, you decide that and then you must explain with your evidence gathered and presented um, to the you if necessary, because the due diligence only um, expects you for you to add the producer, the geolocation of the farm, some relevant or basic information about the producer. That's what you give the you. And mm. the rest of the assessment, you need to keep it for five years. All the, all the deforestation assessment, but also the responsible production assessment, because they were very clever. And even though there are pages and pages of deforestation, there is one article that speaks about responsible production. And that's the hardest one to evidence because you need to comply with all human rights, uh, indigenous people rights, um, child labor, right, child labor, mm -hmm. mother's slavery. And that's the tough part to comply with, or at least to gather evidence from. Um, and so in, 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 as they are written is easy. You need to assess deforestation and responsible production, submit that to diligence. And if you are assessed, then you need to provide the evidence for the due diligence you present. Okay. And when you say assess, we're talking about auditing. So it, is that correct? So they may come and you may never hear from them for three years. And then you hear from them and they say, we want to see the evidence that shows the information about this specific container. Is that exactly. correct? Okay. Exactly. And then is when you present and how robust your risk assessment was. 
Uh, but at any point, the EU is asking you for a certification. Wait, what do you mean a certification? I thought we weren't certifying. No, that that that's that's my point. Like at any point, you present a certification. At any point, mm -hmm. maybe in the due diligence, you can say I did work with this and such and such partner, and that makes my due diligence or my risk right. assessment more robust, like an Inveritas or something like correct. that, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, um, but but in the due diligence, you cannot be certified. It is, it is written there that they do not pretend for there to be any certifications and they do not propose any product. Uh, so they leave it open. And that openness is what creates all this uncertainty that rises along the supply chain. Mm. Because then you have the uncertainty on the producer. Just, what, what does, they have the same question, what does deforestation mm. So for them, it is not that easy because they renovate their crops. Uh, they, they, they do stump. law, they do stuff. They, they do a lot of things. So for them, before the term deforestation, it's also linked in some communities with survival. They need yeah. the, the wood for, for, for cooking and, and heat. And so, so it's not clear. So from their R words. Exporters start, everybody starts interpreting it differently. And, and the uncertainty starts growing. Mm -hmm. And the longer the supply chain and the longer and the more players you have, the bigger uncertainty you have at the end of that enterprise or that entity that submits the due diligence because it has to juggle with all these sources of zip of information and align okay. all of them. Wow. So, if I, I'm going to ask something, tell me if there's a clear answer for this scenario. Let's say somebody has put in all the effort to get their farm to, let's say, an agroforestry level, right? So for people who don't know what that is, it's uh, three layers of canopy, there's intercropping. It's, it's, a very, it's, it's basically growing coffee in an environment where it looks like a forest and it's built, whether it's intentionally built that way or it's naturally occurring that way, it's still agroforestry. What happens if a part of the construction, let's say it was intended by a producer to build their canopy with hardwood trees so that they can cut them down and sell them and they are planting replacement trees in that process so that the agroforestry is a part of making sure there's multiple revenue streams for the farm. Is there any clear information about how that's going to work? There is not. No, the, at least by the regulations, is not. That's when you, that's when you as, a, as an operator, you define that. Okay. You define that risk. And, and it depends on how close you are to the farm. And, and that's help when me responsibility that. takes place. If you don't because, mind, help me understand that. Because it's easy to say that, oh, there was no deforestation in that farm. There was agroforestry. If you have thousands of suppliers and you don't know them, mm -hmm. then you put everybody in the same box of agroforestry. But if you know the farm, if you're able to get to the farm, if you know the producer, if you have the data gathered for years on that farm, if you have pictures, if you have technical assistance that has been approaching that farms periodically, then you know for certain and you can mitigate that risk. You, you know the risk. When you don't know it, you can put everybody in the same box and then pray for you not to be caught or then just say it's agroforestry. But then the, the tough and the effort is, is to get to know and to assess the real risk. And that's when they, they close or, or there's a short supply chain allows you to do that. If you know whom you're buying from, mm -hmm. if you know the farm, even though the farm appears with 0.1% of deforestation, you know what happened there. Mm -hmm. You can assess that as negligent because 
You can present the evidence. You have the hard data on that, even the pictures. If you are not close to the farm, you're not able to do that. And then you just do it blindly and hoping for the best. Speaking about not being close to the farm, the next scenario is what if you're a co-op and people just, like you're gathering um, coffee from a whole bunch of different sources. Is that, your responsibility to be able to geotag where that coffee is coming from again? So in long, again, in longer supply chains, yes, responsibility is shared. At the end, the one that is pushing for the supply chain to do it is the importer because he's the one that comes and has to push the different cobs cooperatives to gather the data in such and such ways. But then the different cooperatives are also working with different importers that might be gathering data in different ways because wow. they have different systems. So, so you get this intricate net of, of probabilities and protocols to gather, yes, the same type of data, polygons. But it's not homogenous, this, right? But it is not homogenous. It is not homogeneous. And the more partners you the have, complex. And the longer this, the, the supply chain, then the permutation is bigger uh, and, and it gets tougher. And that's why there is fear. And every that's why origin. We welcome that. Right. That's why we welcome that. <laughs> because we only get, we get the data from ourselves and present it ourselves. So it's completely homogeneous and we work in every origin with the same systems. But when it gets longer, it's when the fear starts. Right. And I mean, what could go wrong, right? <laughs> okay. Sanctions are hit. Sanctions the, are hit. It just sounds like they're crossing their fingers and they're saying, this is a good idea. We know it's a good idea. But we're going to have to just press go and then see what happens. It reminds it me of Y2K. Exactly like <laughs> it sounds exactly <laughs> like that. Um, which, which again, could have a massive impact. And, and, and it starts with the, with the miscommunication because, because then, then exporters start putting you know, the, the importer puts the pressure on the different exporters, mm -hmm. or put the pressure on the different partners, different partners pressure on cooperatives on the different producers, and then this pressure gets pushed again to the producer level. Wow. Okay. There's so much that could be said for going, what were you going to say? That, that, that was not the intended impact. That again, the whole responsibility and pressure ends up being on the on coffee the farmer. Industry. I mean, and, and what I was going to say there is as though they're, they're not battling enough forces right now. It's okay. In the next episode, folks, we're going to talk about EUDR and greenwashing and if this is greenwashing or if not. So join us for that episode in the next episode. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing, liking, commenting, and most of all, sharing this podcast with your friends. Check the show notes for links, including our sponsors and our Patreon, and stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.